Shalom. Good evening to everyone. And so we're going to go ahead and start. Father, we thank you, Abba Yah, for your goodness, your mercy, and your loving kindness. We love you with all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our strength. You are an awesome, awesome father. Good, good father. And we now we ask that you would uh, help us to understand your word. Help us to give us hearing ears to hear you. Give us seeing eyes to see you and give us uh, an understanding heart that would receive a receptive hearts that would receive your word and and do your word. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us and pouring out your love, great love upon us that you should call us and count us as your children. We love you and we give you honor and glory in Yahusha's name. It is so. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and 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 begin. And if anybody else uh, uh, logs in, then that'll be fine. Okay, so let's start. You need to unblur uh, your screen. Screen share. Unblur your screen because daddy's blurred. Huh? Okay. Unblur the screen. Uh, he's blurred. Okay, let me see if I can. He's Hold blurred. on a minute. Me? Yeah. Just unblur the black ground. Unblur the black background. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Uh, blur my background. Stop that. Is it better now? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so let's start scare sharing the screen. And we will get on with our lesson for tonight. Okay. And let's do the slideshow and play from start. Okay. So we're still on Yah's plans for health and wellness, and we're on part two. There's a, a lot to Yah's dietary, dietary uh, laws and ordinances that we need to know in order to be healthy. Okay. And we're, uh, we're still researching heritage and history. And what I am researching is that uh, the Euphrates River has already dried up. And we know that Revelation 16 has some information on the Euphrates and I think it's 12 too. So you can Google that. But uh, I have I have kind of seeing where there are old maps and which which uh, old maps in the 1400 and 1500s, maybe even early, I think I saw one in uh, 1200 AD, uh, where the uh, Holy Land, the Promised Land um, is in Southern Africa, which is Namibia, and Jerusalem was in Namibia. But I want to validate that and I want to check on to that. And with that being said, the Euphrates River is also in Africa. So I, you know, I just want to be sure before I present any information uh, on that subject, but it has been of great interest. And uh the the Euphrates River that we uh, that we know already, which is in Iraq uh, and Iran, in that area, uh, it, it has dried up, and and people are actually dying that have not been sick before. So we don't know whether there's no information uh, about people uh, dying, and. Um, one of the doctors, she's a African American doctor who worked on the uh, jab med medication. Uh, has died. She died in a couple of days ago. All of a sudden, in her sleep. So, but people are people are um, uh, dying, and and the Bible says that once these fallen angels are released, 
after the Euphrates River dries up, then one third of the world's population is going to die. So I don't, you know, I don't want to say that it's happening now, uh, but I do want to make sure everything that I present is verifiable in some way. Okay, so we're going to move right on then to names and terminology review. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, we get, we're going to do na names and terminology. Uh, I'll start with the uh, the the ones that have two names, and let um, let my husband do the ones that have just uh, one of the on the second slide. So we have Yahuwah, I am that I am, or I will be that I will be. So when we say Yahuwah then we are calling him by the name we, he told us to call him. I am that I am and told Moses to call him. And then there's El Yahuwah. And that uh, is, uh, that has been translated into Lord and, or God. Um, and so then we have Yah, which is when we say Yah, we're saying I am. <coughs> and then Yahuwah Elohai, the Lord might has been translated into the Lord my God. Yahuwah Elohainu translated into the Lord our God. Yahuwah Elohaika, the Lord your God. And then we call him the Most High. And the scriptures do refer to him as the Most High. Uh, Yahusha is, has been translated into Eosus. And then to to uh, to uh, Jesus uh, Jesus, uh, but um, it is uh, it means Yahusha means Yah is salvation. And as I've said before, the name that we have been calling the beloved Son of Elohim uh, has no meaning. But when we pray and we call him Yahusha or Yahshua, which is an Aramaic. Uh, then it means Yah is our salvation from, from uh, sickness, from harm, from danger, and so forth and so on. Uh, Yahusha Hamashiach is salvation in the Messiah, and it has been translated into uh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so. Ruach Elohim. Breath of God, Spirit of God, Ruach ha HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, I mean Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Ruach Yahuwah, Breath of Yah, God, Spirit of God, Ruach HaMashiach, Spirit of Christ, and Yashrael is Israel. Okay, so let's just go into the previous study. Now, before we start this, we're going to we're going to put out a disclaimer. The things that you are going to learn with this uh, with this study, Hebrew study, and uh, last week's study, uh, it is it is not optional when it comes to our help, but it's optional whether you want to follow these these particular uh, uh, statutes, okay? So it's up to you, nobody, you know, I'm not gonna judge you or uh, my husband's not gonna judge you, uh, but we're gonna present to you information that will help you uh, maintain a healthy body and not to have a whole lot of sicknesses and illnesses, okay? so. Yah's plan for healing and wellness, all right? So Exodus 15 begins. So Moses brought Yashael uh, from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it 
was called Mara. And the people murmured against Moses saying, what shall we drink? Okay. And verse 25, I'll just go ahead and go through with this. This is one little thing. And he cried out unto Yahuwah, and Yahuwah showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. So what is happening here? Yahweh showed Moses what to do when they were in a dangerous place, either of, of getting sick or dying of thirst because it was hot in the wilderness. And so he showed Moses what to do, how to keep the children of Yasharel healthy, to keep them from getting sick and to, and to keep them from dying of thirst. So in verse 26, it is and said, it says, he says, if you will, this is Yahuwah, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of Yahuwah Elohai Kim and will not, I'm still, excuse me, and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am Yahuwah Rofeka that heals you. Now we have known it in the past to be uh, Jehovah Rapha, but his proper name is Yahuwah Rofeka. And I am the, the Elohim that heals you. So Yahweh also shows us what to do. Now, this was before they came to the mount and they were given all of the law, given all of the laws and statutes at Mount Sinai and Mount Horeb, which is a, a range of mountains. So, so he he I told them that he made a covenant with him, with them. And in verse 26, the covenant, remember a covenant is between two parties. And uh, if one party breaks the covenant, then the other party does not have to uh, be tied to the covenant. All right. So Yahweh also shows us what to do. When we are in danger of either getting sick or dying, he also yeah. shows us what to do to keep healthy and how and how to keep us uh, how to keep us healthy. That's wrong. That's not that shouldn't be uh, how to keep us from healthy. OK, so it should be how to keep us healthy. So let me let me get rid of that right quick. How to keep us healthy. OK, so. So he shows us how to keep healthy. We, we are supposed to have a long, prosperous, and healthy life. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Leviticus 18, verse 1. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Yahshua'el, and say unto them, I am Yahuwah, Elo. Hakim, and after the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein you dwelt, shall you not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, where I bring you, shall you not do, neither shall you walk in their ordinance. Ye shall do my judgment and keep my commandments to walk therein. I am Yahuwah El High King. You shall therefore keep my statue and my judgment, which if a man do, he shall live in them. And I and I I am Yahuwah. In other words, uh, what he's saying here is that what we are to do is obey his laws and statute rather than the uh, 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 the, the, the laws and statutes, whatever, 
of uh, the land wherever they're going in Egypt or wherever they are. Uh, follow Yah's uh, 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 statute and commandment, and your land, your your days will be longer upon the land uh, which Yah has given us. Okay. Okay. So last week we went over uh, some deadly diseases that strikes blacks most. Okay. So one of the points on the on the web WebMD uh, website, several deadly diseases strike black Americans harder and more often than they do white Americans. Diabetes is 60% more common. So it's 60% over that of uh, the white counterparts. 60% more common in black Americans than in white Americans. And blacks are up to two and a half times more likely to suffer a limb amputation, amputation and up to 5.6 times more likely to suffer kidney disease than other people with diabetes. And despite lower tobacco exposure, black men are 50% more, that's over and above the white counterparts, 50% more likely than white men to get lung cancer. So, so this is very important information when we see our loved ones uh, suffering from diseases that perhaps can be avoided by following y'all's y'all's laws. Okay, that, that this is very important information. But like we said in our disclaimer, it is your choice to do this. Okay. Okay, so let's move on. Let's see. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay. Uh, continue with WebMD. Uh, seven deadly disease strike blacks most. Strokes kill four times more. Thirty-five to fifty-four year old black America, black Americans than white Americans. Black have nearly twice the first time stroke risk of whites, okay? Blacks develop high blood pressure early in life and with much higher blood pressure level than whites. Nearly 42% of black men and more than 45% of black women aged 20 and older have high blood pressure. Cancer treatment is equally successful for all races, yet black men have a 40% higher cancer death rate than the white, white men. African-American women have a 20% higher cancer death rate than white women, okay? okay? And all of this can be attributed to our Diets. Diets. <clears throat> Things that we eat. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now let's look at part two of his plans for healing and wellness. Let's look at that because he loves us. I'm, I'm just going to preface this, this entire land lesson is that he loves you. He loves you and his plan is not to keep you from enjoying life and enjoying foods, but he has made, he made our body. So he knows what will uh, tear our bodies down. He knows what will make us sick. He knows what will uh, uh, cause us to have early death and to have a miserable life even before we sleep. So that is so important. So that's so important that we pay attention to his plan for wellness. Okay, so let's look at Leviticus 11. Now, last week we went over 
the uh, previous verses to Leviticus 11 and 9, where we're going to start. So if you have not seen that uh, and, and you have not seen that teaching, uh, make sure that you see that teaching and don't miss out because that is very important. Okay, now before we even start in this, when our uh, forefathers and foremothers or ancestors, if you want to call them that, came over on the slave ships, many of them probably, I'm not going to say uh, 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 did, but many of them probably did not break the dietary laws. Mm -hmm. Because even over in on the continent of Africa now, you have uh, the majority, you have the majority of the Africans, they are following his dietary laws. But over, when, when they got over here on the slave ships, uh, they didn't have a choice. And so they had to eat what they were given. And so a uh, short history was that when they, when they, uh, when uh, they were enslaved here in the United States, they were given uh, pork and they weren't given good cuts of pork. They were given the ears, the head and the feet and the chitlins and, and the lungs and the liver and all of those things that the slave masters didn't necessarily want or eat, okay? But now they did manage to cook them and because of the creativity that we have as a people, uh, they did manage to cook them where they were palatable. They were pal palatable and they could eat them, okay? Uh, but let's look at what Le Leviticus 11 says. These shall you eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall you eat. Verse 10, and all that have not fins and scales in the sea and in the rivers of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be, listen here now, an abomination unto you. So these are abomination in the eyes of the most high. So we are not to eat them. 11, they shall be even an abomination unto you. You shall not eat of their flesh, but you shall have their carcasses in abomination. So whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. And I don't know if you've heard that verse in the mouth of uh, in the mouth of two, a thing is established. So he has said it actually three times. Verses, verses 10, 11, and 12. So he has said it. He said that word abomination. Okay, so let's look out. Let's look out at, at um, let's look at what he is talking about. Okay. Uh oh, I didn't mean the camera. See, I, I was going so fast. <laughs> Oh my, I did all these like that. That was last year's, last week's. So let me erase it, excuse me. Let me erase it. This is the fish. Okay, I apologize. I apologize. Okay. Considered as food, uh, fish. And, and as she just went over, these, these items that are considered food they have scales and they have fins, okay? Okay, all right. Now, uh, the 10, uh, we're gonna do 10 out of 11 benefits of eating fish. 
First benefit, high in important nutrients that most people are lacking, okay? This includes high quality protein, iodine, and various vitamins and minerals. And I have learned, I don't have it up here, but I've learned that when our skin is covered with moles, that we have a, a deficiency in iodine. Okay, with moles and, and little growths on our skin. That's an iodine deficiency. Okay, so the, se the second thing is that fatty species are sometimes considered the healthiest. Fatty fish, including salmon, trout, sardines, tuna, and mackerel are higher in fat-based nutrients. So we want to try to eat those. It, it recommends that we eat those twice a week, you know. So I've had mine today. I had a new recipe for salmon. Okay, so now this includes vitamin D, a fat-soluble nutrient that many people are lacking, okay? And fatty fish also boasts omega-3 fatty acids, which, acids, which are crucial for optimal body and brain function and strongly linked to a reduced risk of many diseases. So the omega-3 fatty acids, we need those for brain functioning, especially as we age. Now, some of you are still young, but you still need, you still need this fatty fish omega-3 acids uh, to for your brain to continue to continue to develop, and 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 um, uh, expectant mommies need uh, uh, fatty three omega three fatty acids also, so the children, so the baby's brain can develop. Okay. Number two, may lower your risk of heart attacks and strokes. Fish is considered one of the most heart healthy foods that you can eat. Mm. Many large observational studies show that the people who eat fish regularly have a lower risk of heart attacks, strokes, and death from heart disease. In one study, in, in more than 40,000 men in the United States, those who regularly ate one or more servings of fish per week had a 15% lower risk of heart disease, okay? Uh, and finally, researchers believe that the fatty types of fish are even more beneficial for heart health due to their high omega-3 fatty acid content. Okay, notice how this Notice how this is the very opposite of the, uh, the things that weren't considered food last week that caused strokes and heart disease and, and diabetes and so forth. So this is the very opposite. This is our loving Yah who's telling us what we should and should not eat. Okay, number three. Fish, is, um, it may low, oh, you did that one, I okay, that. yeah. That's two. Three, contains nutrients that are crucial during development. The omega-3 fat, docosahexaenoic acid, docosahexaenoic acid, DHA, no wonder they have the acronym DHA, is especially important for brain and eye development. And this is for especially the young, uh, the young mothers who are expecting. And also for children, they need to, they need to consume the omega-3 fatty acids. For this reason, it is often recommended that pregnant and breastfeeding women eat enough omega-3 fatty acids. And this comes from uh, we have the trusted. Uh, how many trusted sources are from these studies. However, some fish are high in mercury, which is linked to brain developmental problems. Mm. So thus, pregnant women should only eat low mercury fish, such as 
salmon, sardines, and trout, and no more than 12 ounces per week and avoid raw and uncooked fish because it may contain microorganisms that can harm the fetus. So those, uh, those things, those fish that are wild caught, those are the best. Those are the best because the others are farm raised and they all in there together with the waste and, and it's, it's not a very good situation, okay? Four, may boost, may boost brain health, which often decline uh, with aging. While mild mental decline is normal, serious neurodegenerative alignments like Alzheimer's disease also exist. Many observational studies show that people who eat more fish have slower rates of mental decline. Okay, studies also reveal that people who eat fish every week have more gray matter, your brain's major function tissue, in the part of the brain that regulates emotional and memory. Um, so what this is saying, you know, uh, all of us and uh, uh, I'm experiencing uh, uh, a mild mental decline and say that's normal uh, as we get older. But what they're saying here, these type of fish uh, uh, or, or eating, yeah, the type of fish that was mentioned, we eat those, this would help us uh, 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 keep us from losing, uh, uh, I guess you could call it, uh, mental decline at a very slow rate, okay? So, so you know, fish is healthy, and, and sometimes we think it's inconvenience. We don't like the, uh, the smell and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, we've got to uh, learn to put aside of uh, uh, stuff, you know, things that are different uh, and, uh, uh, and and just go ahead and move on with what y'all's telling us to eat. You know, I can't help from thinking about um, the first time that I, uh, I, I, I had gout and that's one of the diseases, you know, and uh, we were down in Wilmington at a conference and uh, for three days in a row, uh, I, I had a seafood platter consisting of fish, oysters, shrimps, and scallops. And uh, by the time I got home after the conference was over, I could not walk because I had I had gout so bad. And 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 what I'm saying he uh, or pastors often said, and we've said is that uh, uh, everything we eat is not meant for food for us. As a result, it takes a toll on our body and it behooves us that we pay attention to uh, what Yah is, is, is instructing us to eat and not to eat so that we can have a longer and a healthy lifespan, okay? All right. Okay, number five, five benefits. Fifth benefit, may help prevent and treat depression, a common mental condition. And if, yes, depression is a mental illness. And so it's characterized by low mood, sadness, decreased energy, and loss of interest in life and activities. And if you recall last week when we were talking about pork, uh, pork sometimes causes mental illnesses, okay? So uh, remember that. And then studies have found that people who eat fish regularly are much less likely to become depressed. And this is from 12 uh, trusted sources. Numerous controlled trials also reveal that omega-3 fatty acids may fight depression and significantly increase the effectiveness of any antidepressant medications that people might be, take, might be taken, uh, taking. And so there are several sources. You can look at the slide and see 13, 14, and 15 sources. 
All right, so fish and omega-3 fatty acids may also aid other mental conditions such as bipolar disorder. And it may even do other, uh, other uh, mental conditions, but you know, bipolar disorder is a mental illness and there are several others, you know, that, that may can benefit from this information, okay? Six, a good dietary source of vitamin D. The vitamin D functions like a steroid hormone in your body and a whopping 41.6% of the US population is deficient or low in, in it. This is uh, uh, the, the D vitamin. Uh, uh, my wife and I, we, we, we nightly, we take uh, vitamin D3, okay? Fish and fish products are among the best dietary sources of vitamin D. Fatty fish like salmon and herring contain the highest amount. Uh, and you got 18 trusted sources there. Number seven, uh, may reduce your risk of anti autoimmune immune diseases. Study, several studies link omega-3 or fish oil intake to reduce, reduce risk of, of type 1 diabetes in children, as well as a form of autoimmune diabetics in adults, uh, 19 trusted sources, 20 trusted sources, 21 trusted for sources. Okay. okay. All right. Eighth reason, may help prevent asthma in children. Asthma is a common disease characterized by chronic inflammation of your airways. Studies show that regular fish consumption is linked to a 24% Lower risk of asthma in children, but no significant effect has been found in adults. Mm. Okay, so that's a that's good to know. And I remember when Jazz was uh, little, they diagnosed her with asthma. Uh, but one of her favorite things to eat was fish, even as a little toddler. So that could have been uh, uh, that could have been instrumental and her not, uh, that disease not following her into, uh, into her adolescence and adulthood. Uh, ninth reason, may protect your vision in old age. Age-related macular degeneration, which is AMD, is a leading cause of vision impairment and blindness that mostly affects older adults. Regular fish intake was linked to a 40% lower risk of AMD in women. Okay, so that is, uh, that is significant. That is very significant. So these are all wonderful reasons. And all this information comes from helpline.com. Okay. 10. Fish may improve your sleep quality. Sleep disorders have been come, have become increasingly common worldwide. In a six-month study in 95 middle-aged men, a meal with salmon three times per week leads to improvement in both sleep and daily function. 30 trusted sources. Okay. Okay. So we've given you the good reasons why we should eat fish, but you know, the most high knows probably uh, hundreds or thousands of reasons why we should uh, include fish in our diet. All right. Okay. Now this is going to hurt your feelings, uh, but you know, that's, uh, you know, that saying, uh, you know, that saying is don't shoot the message. <laughs> So, uh, so let me, uh, let me, uh, let me get rid of these, these uh, words that I should have deleted on this, on this. Uh. Okay, so let me uh, go back. Now, these are probably some people's favorites. They are some people's favorites. So, you know, 
Yao does not consider them as food. Okay. So we're just going to move on. The choice is yours. Just giving you the information. All right. Uh, then we have another one where we didn't. Use the same slide, but we didn't uh, correct it. Um, if you see those, you know what they are. They that's are a that's a catfish, and then there's a crab. I did uh, I put his picture in twice, so that's a catfish. Does not have um, have um, oops, catfish does not have uh, scales or fins. Okay, and this is messing up here. Okay, well, I'll correct that. But anyway, you see that that's not a hair. And you see that those aren't swine. Those are oysters and mussels. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, not considered as food. Fish that do, do not have scales include catfish, sharks, rays, chimaeras. I don't know what they are. I should have looked it up, though. But if you were interested, you can look it up. Skates, moray eels, sturgeons, paddlefishes, salifin, or, uh, and blennies. Cone tooth blennies, hagfishes, and lampreys. Now, there are others that are not named, but if they don't have scales nor fins, uh, they are not considered as food. The illnesses of most, wait, illness caused by sailfish, okay? The illnesses of most common, con, of most Illness of most concern from eating raw or uncooked, or uncooked oysters or clams are a viral infection, neurovirus infection, and hepatitis A. Viburios can result from infections of the gastrointestinal intestinal system, skin, or the bloodstream. People can get vibrosis from eating raw and uncooked shellfish, mainly raw oysters. The risk of getting infected is the highest during the warmer months when there are more viral, viral bacteria in the water. Once again, there it is. It's up to you to... Uh, to uh, uh, because I know a lot of people like raw oysters and they go sit down at the oysters bars uh, and eat raw oysters, you know, and, you know, uh, y'all consider these things not food. I think there was somebody, uh, he was a celebrity that had died from some raw oysters. Uh, and I can't think of it. Or uh, it was my may have been back in the summer. Yeah, had died from eating raw oysters. All right, here's some more illness caused by shellfish. Paralytic shellfish poisoning, PSP. Uh, PSP is caused by eating shellfish connect, contaminated with saxitoxins. These potent neurotoxins are produced by various Dinoflagellates, a wide range of shellfish may cause PSP, but most cases occur after eating mussels or clams. Now, when we were living, we are from uh, the coast of North Carolina, and when we were living back home, uh, sometimes on the news, we would often hear that there is a ban on shellfish. Mm because of red tide. It was some kind of red algae that formed in the water and you were not supposed to eat shellfish uh, because it will cause you to get hepatitis. 
So, so that is, that just came to my mind. And then there's another one, why you shouldn't eat muscles. And I don't know how many eat muscles. I've never seen them, but I've seen them uh, uh, on movies or whatever, where they eat them. Muscles mostly stay in one place. Eating plankton that they filter from the water. And because they are filter feeders, they sometimes consume bacteria and toxins, making them potential, potentially dangerous for you to eat. Cooking destroys the majority of contaminants, but some may remain. So now you can kind of see uh, uh, why our loving Heavenly Father does not consider shellfish as food. There's so many dangerous, dangerous of eating shellfish. Uh, illness caused by shellfish continue. Shellfish poisoning uh, SP is caused by eating seafood contaminated with specific biotoxin poison. This happens when certain algae grows out of control and produces a high level of biotoxin. This is sometimes called harmful algae bloom or red tide. The pastor just got through talking about, you know, red tide. These natural toxins pollute the water and some seafood, okay? Okay. Okay. Yahusha, our savior and deliverer and fish. Matthew 14. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place and the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Yahushua said unto them, they need not depart, give you them to eat. And they said unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, bring them here to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained 12 baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. So you see here that Yahusha fed fish to the multitude. And this was just one instance, but later on in Matthew 15, he fed 4,000 with uh, seven loaves, and I don't remember the name, the number of the fish, but it was with the same meal anyway. And also he fed the disciples after his resurrection. He fed them fish because they couldn't catch any. Uh, and he told them to cast the net on the other side. And then they had a hall that they that were breaking their nets. So, so he, uh, anytime we see that he is, uh, eating, for the most most part, he eats fish. So he was an example for us that we are to consume fish. We are to consume fish. Okay, so we are done with this um, teaching, and and so we hope that if you have, we're going to open it up with questions or comments at this point. It's tough, but we understand. <laughs> and, 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 and not only that, but uh, I've heard Jazz and Martin say it and, and others, 
But once you've off, once once you you stop eating pork and some of the other thing, if you try to go back to them, they don't taste the same. They don't taste right, you know. And uh, uh, one of my favorite one of my favorite things to eat was a shrimp burger with slaw, you know. And I haven't had one, and uh, uh, you know I could go into restaurants and see and smell those shrimp and um, almost get the shakes. Just joking, but now I, I I have no desire. You know, I desire even more to have a healthier body. And I'm gonna tell you, it's a blessing to walk around without gout. Now that's for sure. And that's one of the things that we didn't mention that it will shellfish will exacerbate gout. It will cause you to uh, the gout to attack your body. It's called gouty arthritis cause you to it will attack your joints and it would cause um, your, your, your 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 it causes your uric acid level to uh get to a point uh, uh i think nine is is when your uric acid level get nine uh, uh, you have gout because i remember one time i i took my annual physical and uh my doctor was going over my uh, uh, my blood test, my labs, and she said, "Do you have gout?" I said, "No, ma'am." But she said, "Well, the way it's going now, you're getting ready to have gout because your uric acid level is such and such." And it wasn't uh, what even a week later that I had an attack. I had a flare up of gout. Okay, so you know. Uh, as we said, some of these things are tough. Jazz said it's tough and all. And, and as Deborah said, uh, you know, it's up to you whether you want to eat them or not or whatever. But, you know, we're just, uh, we didn't make this up. This is in uh, scriptures, uh, in, in, in our uh, Torah or mm -hmm. it's in, the, uh, in, in the Leviticus, you know, and in uh, uh other 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 books uh, of the Bible, so you know, don't, Deborah, as Pastor Deborah said, don't shoot us. You know, we're just uh, trying to be pastors, warning you uh, not only uh, about sinful things, but also things that could uh, uh, cause cause harm to our bodies and uh, cause shorter lifespan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else? Questions or comments? We'd like to hear from you. Okay. Seems like we got to go fishing more. You got to go fishing more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to catch some of those crappies, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. But uh, mo most, uh, as we get, as we age, most older Americans don't eat shellfish anyway, because it, it has an adverse effect on their bodies. So, uh, so that is, you know, we, we just, we're just going to have to make a decision and trust Yah that he knows best. Since he made our bodies, in Psalms 139, he, he formed us, you know, in our mother's womb. And so he knit us, he knit us together. So he knows what is harmful and what is beneficial for us and what will keep us healthy. And, uh, but, you know, it's up to, it's up to each individual. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? I agree. It's, it's tough, you know, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, I have to admit that it was easier for me because I actually did not like shellfish. The only thing I ate was shrimp. And uh, the only thing I ate was shrimp. And I used to love it. I'll be honest. I used to love shrimp. 
even when we went to the restaurant, you know, back, living back on the coast, we would go to the seafood restaurant and they bring you a plate of shrimp. Some of them had that little black line in there. And, you know, we don't know what was in that little black line on the top of the shrimp, you know. And so, uh, and most restaurants don't take the time to really, really clean, you know, to really, really clean uh, their, um, you know, seafood. Uh, but it never made me sick. Uh, but I, you know, I, it used to be one of my favorite uh, seafoods. And so, you know, when I read it, I said, oh, you know, I said, oh, no, can't have shrimp. Oh, no. But then the Most High is so wonderful and he teaches us. He took me straight to Leviticus. He did. He took me straight to Leviticus, I, you know, because I asked him, why can't we eat shrimp, you know, and he took me straight to Leviticus and so forth and so on. So, um, yeah, so I know it's hard. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but then we have to think about our health, you know. My oldest son, who's a nutritionist, he would often say, eat to live and not live to eat. So I don't know, that kind of st stuck with me. Eat to live and not live to eat. There are so many more enjoyable foods that we can partake of. All right, Allie. Mm. All I can say is fix it most high, that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. But you, I, you know, one thing you we we're gonna feel much better when we lay aside those things that are not considered food, and and uh, just just eat clean. It's called clean eating clean, and when we just eat clean and not uh, ingest things that are an abomination like shellfish. Or, you know, and, you know, because remember the, uh, you know, the scriptures that we read at the beginning, where it says, when you come, when you come, uh, when you, uh, you are not to uh, do what the Egyptians did. And so no doubt they ate a whole lot of things. And when you come into the land, he said, this is Yah said, he said, you are not to do what the Canaanites do. And so that he was he was teaching us line by line, precept by precept, that is that is, you know, and I would um I would much rather do without things that he doesn't consider as food and feel good and feel good. And I, I am happy to say at my age um that I don't have high blood pressure, I don't have sugar diabetes. I don't have, and the only medication I'm taking is, um, um, is um, uh, uh, Synthroid, which is for my thyroid. In 1989, I had to have part of my thyroid removed. So my doctor, endocrinologist, put me on Synthroid. And that is the only medicine that I take. And uh, when I go for a checkup, my doctors are so delighted that a person my age has no other medications to take. So it is, it, it, I can tell you, you know, um, when, you, when you keep living and eating clean, you're gonna feel so much better. And as you get into your golden years, as I am in my golden years, I can tell you. I can tell you, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. Okay. All right. Anybody else comments or so forth and so on? All I, right. I had a question. Um, okay. Where does um, chicken come into play at? Maybe I missed a previous lesson or something. Oh, no. Chicken, chicken is actually a clean. We're going to do fowls uh, next week. Cl uh, chicken is actually a clean fowl. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chicken. Yep. And uh, the ones that are not clean are the ones that we wouldn't eat anyway. Buzzards and eagles and 
talks and stuff, you know, you know, but I did, I can, I can uh, attest that the community where I grew up in, in North Carolina, there was a guy, there was a man that actually tried to eat a buzzard. That should get a reaction. But when he cut him open, he couldn't stand the smell. I can imagine. Uh, but, <laughs> chicken, chicken is, is a clean bird. Uh, the only problem that we, we have with chicken at this point is that they are raised on chicken farms and it's not the most healthiest way to raise chickens. The healthiest way to raise chickens are when they are roaming free in our yard and uh, they have access to seeds and, and crickets and worms and all of that. Uh, which crickets are a uh, uh, are considered a food. Locusts and 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 all of those they're considered food. <laughs> we don't eat them, but yeah, they're considered. But yeah, that um, uh, when they roamed around in our yards, they are the healthiest. That they are the healthiest chicken, and they taste it different. Because I grew up on a farm, and I remember, uh, I remember helping my mom. Uh, you know, I would go catch a chicken. She was going to have chicken for dinner tonight. And I was a little girl. I'd go help her catch it. And then she'd wring the neck and and then throw it in a, a pot of hot water. And pull, we'd pull off the feathers and and cut it up and fried it or stewed it or what, however she fixed it. But chickens had a whole lot more flavor than they do now. Yeah. So, so chicken is good. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Well, so we're going to uh, do a closing prayer and uh, speak the parting blessing upon you. Abba, we thank you for giving us the things that are good for our bodies. And we thank you for warning us of those things that are not beneficial, that will make us sick and even shorten our lives, and you consider them as abominations. So Father, we love you and we thank you. And I pray for everyone who listens to this teaching that they will accept your word in their hearts because you love them and you don't want them to be sick or debilitated or any other any other thing that would be uh, that they won't have an abundant life. So thank you, Father. We love you all of our with all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our strength. And now may Yahuwah bless you and keep you, make His face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you, lift up His countenance upon you, and grant you His. Shalom, which includes health, wellness, prosperity, and peace. All right. So love you all. And we are out. <laughs> <laughs>